In this lesson, we'll be looking at momentum, past paper questions, and we'll be tackling all of these sub questions. This is a bullet trolley example. Let's jump right in. Okay, so they say a wooden trolley, they give you the mass, moves to the left with a constant velocity of three meters per second. They give you the mass of the bullet, which is fired horizontally from the left of the trolley, as you can say, as you can see on the picture, and it's moving towards the trolley. So the trolley is initially moving to the left. The bullet is initially moving to the right. The bullet strikes, hits the trolley, and the bullet is going to come to rest inside the trolley. But now be careful. Just because they say the bullet comes to rest inside the trolley doesn't mean that relative to the ground, the bullet is at rest. I hope that makes sense. Of course, the bullet will come to rest inside the trolley. If, it's, if it reaches the trolley, stops inside the trolley, doesn't travel through the trolley and like lodges into the trolley. But the bullet trolley combination appears to be moving to the right. And they do say that now. The bullet trolley combination moves to the right. So what that means is that after the collision, the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the trolley add it together, they together move at a particular final velocity. Okay, so the bullet does technically have a final velocity. It's not zero. It just comes to rest inside of the trolley. So their masses will join up. Okay, they also give me the average net force exerted by the trolley on the bullet. Let's see what they want from us in terms of questions, starting with 4.1. They say ignore all frictional and rotational effects. That's normal. 4.1, write down the magnitude, so the size or the amount, and direction of the average net force that the bullet exerts on the trolley. So what they gave us is the force that the trolley exerts on the bullet. And they told me it's 591 newtons. Now, can you see that they didn't give me a direction? But just think about it. The trolley exerts a force on the bullet. Which way would the force that the trolley exert on the bullet which way would the trolley essentially hit the bullet or exert a force on the bullet i hope you can see the bullet is coming this way the trolley is coming this way so the trolley will exert a force on the bullet to the left now what they want in our question is basically the force the magnitude and direction of the force that the bullet exerts on the trolley. So basically, instead of trolley on bullet, we're doing bullet on trolley. Swap the two words around. Remember, that is Newton's third law of motion. So the magnitude will be the same, 591 newtons, but the direction will be in the opposite direction. So to the right. Now, in your final answer, you don't make the one positive and the one negative. Yes, technically, if we pick a positive direction, say, for example, we say to the right is positive. When we perform calculations and we substitute, the force of the bullet on the trolley would be a positive number because it's going to the right. And the force of the trolley on the bullet would be a negative number if I were to substitute. But Remember, forces are vectors. They're going to have direction. You always write a vector as a positive final answer. The negative just means in the negative direction. Right, 4.2. Calculate the magnitude of the velocity with which the bullet strikes the trolley. I always recommend that you list the variables that you have versus the variables that you do not have. So let's do that. Let's start with everything relating to the bullet. We know the mass of the bullet is 0, 0,03 kilograms. We don't know the initial velocity of the bullet, VI of the bullet. And just take note, the magnitude of the velocity with which the bullet strikes the trolley that is the initial velocity of the bullet. So that is what the question wants. Velocity with which the bullet strikes the trolley, that is the initial velocity of the bullet. That's what I don't have. I also don't know the final velocity of the bullet. Remember, the final velocity of the bullet will be the same as the final velocity of the trolley because they are together now. So I also don't know that. I don't know. And let's go on to trolley. What do we know about the trolley? We know the mass of the trolley is 2.7 kilograms. We know the initial velocity of the trolley is three meters per second. And at this stage, I think it is important for us to choose a positive direction. So if we choose to the right as positive, when I substitute the initial velocity of the trolley in, I will substitute it in 
as a negative. That's very important. But again, I don't know the final velocity of the trolley. So I hope you can see the issue that we are sitting with in this scenario. I, my ultimate goal is to work out the initial velocity of the bullet, but I don't have that. In order to get that, I need to at least have the final velocity of the bullet trolley combination. So let's see if we can first work with the trolley because we have more information about the trolley. We at least have its initial velocity. We also know the net force exerted by the trolley on the bullet. So we know the F net of the trolley on the bullet is 591 newtons. And again, this is the net force of the trolley on the bullet. Remember we discussed in the previous question that the force that the trolley is exerting on the bullet, think about it, the trolley is going to hit the bullet going that way, it's exerting a force going to the left. So I chose to the right as positive, so this would be a negative if I were to use it and substitute it in. And I do know the time that it takes for this collision to happen is 0, 0,02 seconds. So I hope that listing the information maybe provides clarity on what formula to use. So taking a look at these formulae, for example, this is not going to help me find the velocity with which the bullet strikes the trolley because sure, I'm looking for velocity, but I don't know momentum. Same thing here. I am looking for the initial velocity of the bullet, but I don't know the final velocity of the bullet and I don't know the change in momentum. So these formulae are definitely not going to work for me. If we take a look at this one, this is the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Remember, this formula is not given on your formula sheet, but it is a very important principle for you to use in a question like this. Let's see. We have the mass of the trolley. We don't... No, we do have the initial mass velocity of the trolley. That was given there. Three to the left. We have the mass of the bullet. We're looking for the initial velocity of the bullet. So this is my main goal here. We have the mass of the trolley. We don't know this as well. We have the mass of the bullet, but we don't know this as well. So I can't use this. So what am I going to use? The hint, the clue is in this given information over here. So the formula on the formula sheet that we will be using is one that looks like this. And you will need to write it exactly as it is given on the formula sheet, which is in this format. Then you can expand it. So this is the net force multiplied by the time is equal to the change in momentum. Now what we have according to my calculate or according to my little list that I worked out. Yeah, remember I said we have more information about the trolley. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use this formula for the trolley. Let's just see what happens if we do this. So F net delta T, how do I expand delta P? There it is, it's given on the formula sheet like this. Delta P, change of momentum is equal to this over there. So I'm just going to expand it quickly. This is all using my formula sheet, so nothing too weird or new. Then substituting in values for the trolley. Remember, the net force exerted by the trolley on the bullet is 591. What we sub in here is the force that the bullet exerts on the trolley. So what is happening to the trolley to make it change its momentum? The force of the bullet on the trolley, remember, we said was 591 newtons to the right. I chose to the right as positive, so it's going to be 591. So it's this net force that the bullet is exerting on the trolley, here, bullet on trolley, this one, that is causing the trolley to change its momentum. This happens over a time period of 0, 0,02 seconds, as stated in the question. The mass of the trolley, again, given in the question, is 2.7. I don't know the final velocity of the trolley minus the mass of the trolley is 2.7. The initial velocity of the trolley, again, given to me three meters per second, but to the left. So this needs to be a negative three. This is so important that you substitute it in with the correct sign. It's because the initial velocity is going to the left and I chose to the right as positive. If you then work this out on your calculator, so multiply these two together first, and then I multiplied negative 2.7 multiplied by negative 3, got me positive 8.1. Then to do the final solving, you say 11.82, so this number, 11.82 minus 8.1, okay, inverse operations. You get an answer, and you divide that by 2.7. So you're going to get 3.72 on the one side of the equation, 2.7 VF, and then you simply say 3.72 divided by 2.7, 
and I get one comma three seven 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 the seven is recurring meters per second now please take note what I have found is the final velocity of the bullet and the trolley after the collision so that is what I found but that's not what the question wanted the question wants the initial velocity of the bullet the velocity with which the bullet strikes the trolley. So now using that, which I just calculated, I can now substitute that into this formula that earlier on did not work. So you always start with the sum of the initial momentum equals the sum of the final momentum. You take the mass of the trolley multiplied by the initial velocity of the trolley, mass of the bullet, initial velocity of the bullet. Then you do it again, but with instead of initial velocities with final velocities. If you prefer for in your final scenario, this part over here, to add the masses together in a bracket and put the final velocity on the outside, that's also fine. Because remember, their masses combine and they travel with the same final velocity. You are allowed to do that. Remember, I chose to the right is positive. My trolley's mass is 2.7. My initial velocity of the trolley is negative three because it was traveling to the left. The mass of my bullet 0 0.03 kilograms. Remember, your masses must be in kilograms. Your initial velocity of the bullet is what you're looking for. Then the mass of the trolley is 2.7, as stated. Final velocity of the trolley. Remember, it says the trolley is going to move to the right after the collision. And we worked out that that final velocity is 1,377777. 1, 1, 1,377777. That goes on. Same thing, mass of the bullet, 0, 0,03, and the final velocity of the bullet, the same, 1, 0,3, 7, 7, 7, and so on. Now, remember, we're looking for the initial velocity of the bullet, so you just do simple mathematics. So I've shown the steps that I would apply when doing the equation solving, so you can go through those, and you get the initial velocity is 395,38 meters per second. Remember, velocity or speed always has the negative one over there. And the direction is to the right. Now, the question actually just wanted the magnitude. So you don't need to give direction. But my velocity comes out as a positive, and I chose to the right as positive. So if we wanted velocity, if we didn't say magnitude, you would have to give direction, and that would be to the right because it's a positive number and right is positive. Another thing that I want to just make note of is, do you see that I didn't round off until the very end of the question? So you might find that annoying, but you have to. Over here, when I calculated the final velocity of the bullet trolley, I did not round off that 1,377777. I kept all those decimals. You cannot round off in the middle of the question. Okay, so there it is. 4.3 wants me to state the principle of conservation of linear momentum in words. So that's a definition you need to learn. It's very important that you say the total linear momentum, so total is very important, in an isolated system remains constant or is conserved. All the words that are underlined, if you don't say those words, if you leave them out, you will get minus one mark. So rather just learn the definition off by heart. Then 4.4. Calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the bullet trolley combination after the collision. Now, what's kind of weird in this paper is that to, in order to do the previous question, I did this already. So a little bit awkward, but it is what it is. I will show you the memo now for this as well. They have various options, but we basically did this already. Now, because they asked me to state the principle of conservation of linear momentum, if they ask you to state something, you are most likely going to be using that in the next question. So they want us to use the sum of the initial momentum equals the sum of the final momentum. Remember, I showed you how to expand that formula. In this case, I am going to take out the velocity as a common factor. I'm going to use this version of the formula because they stick together. And the question wants me to find the velocity of the bullet trolley combination after the collision. So I'm looking for VF. Just makes it a bit easier like that. Let's sub in everything. So I've substituted similarly to how I showed you before. Now we know the initial velocity of the bullet. So I just substituted in our rounded off answer over there. And if you do the mass, you should get 1.38 meters per second. And they just want magnitude. So again, I don't need a direction. Now again, that is exactly what we got earlier when we did this calculation. So I'll show you that 1,37777, which is 1,38. 
So just to show you, here is the memo for 4.2. So we did do this. That was our, how, our way to get VF, which I showed you earlier. And then we use this to get VI. But then in the next question, they want you to again get VF, which is a bit strange. And here's all your different memo answers for that as well. I hope that this was helpful. For more momentum past paper questions, check out the links in the description box below. Bye, everyone.